Good morning, so this is Deepak here and I'm in Los Angeles at uh, Malika's home actually and um, I'm on my way to Detroit. Tomorrow I'll be speaking at uh, the Renaissance Church there about You Are the Universe. So we continue our discussions on You Are the Universe. Thank you for all your support of this book, New York Times bestseller. Thank you, Menas, for co-authoring the book with me. And thank you all for this, uh, joining the discussions right here on um, discoveringyourcosmicself.com. So uh, today, uh, the question is from Psyche Delicacy. Psyche Delicacy. And she says, my definition of wrong is sensory and emotional pain. Why should it exist anywhere ever? There should only be neutral and euphoric experiences. I always think it's slightly mean of God or the timeless awareness we are to not give any clue that the innumerable subjectivities it plays are each eternal and everything is one. I think that's wrong. Every mask personality God wears should at least have a clear sense that they're eternal. Okay, so um, dear Psychedelic Kissy, uh, I can see why you've named yourself Psychedelicacy. You obviously feel a lot of pain and suffering uh, of the world. So your name seems quite appropriate. Uh, here is the answer. First of all, you're personalizing God. So the God that you're talking about right now is a projection. And uh, so one of the things to remember is that uh, God is a human construct uh, except for uh, awareness in which those constructs come about. And I can uh, be talking about that uh, in a few minutes. But God is a human construct and God is as we are. So if you're in the fight light response, then God is mean and God is uh, a tyrant and God is a dysfunctional parent. There's a love-hate relationship. <clears throat> if on the other hand, you're in the reactive response, then God is a control freak. God wants you to obey usually his rules and regulations. And God says, if you don't obey my rules and regulations, then I will punish you. So this is also another projection. If you're centered and if you're in the restful awareness response, then God is peace, peace of mind. If you're intuitive, then God is higher knowing, a knowing that's more contextual, relational, holistic, doesn't have a win-lose orientation, doesn't think in terms of cause-effect, but actually is eavesdropping on a deeper intelligence. That's intuition. So then if you are um, in the intuitive response, then God is the God of understanding and forgiveness. See, you're projecting your own state of consciousness onto what you call God. If you are in the creative response, then God is the creator of space, time and causality. And it's the God you find in the book of Genesis. If you are in an archetypal domain of awareness, then God is all the different archetypes, the gods and goddesses, the devas, the asuras, the angels, the demons. So you see, in every stage of our uh, uh, development, in every stage of our development, God is as we are, till we finally give up all projections and then God is just pure awareness, pure possibility, pure um, uh, potentiality, uh, pure creativity, evolution, truth, goodness, harmony, beauty, satchitanand, satyam, shivam, sundaram. These are words to describe the ineffable. Okay, so first of all, that's the first part to your question. Uh, why is there pain and suffering? Uh, you asked it in different ways and then you imposed your idea 
of how things should be. But how things should be is not necessarily how things always are, uh, because, uh, you know, God or the universe doesn't have to conform to your sense of rationality or right and wrong or whatever. So now let's discuss a very important principle, which is called complementarity, complementarity, which means joy and suffering, birth and death, pleasure and pain, hot and cold, up and down, organism and environment, um, mind and body, space and time, mass and energy. These are two aspects of the same fundamental reality. And all experience is by contrast. If you didn't have uh, contrast, you wouldn't have experience. If there's only heart, then you never know what cold is. So if you eliminated all the suffering and pain in the world, you would never know what joy and pleasure is. Complementarity. Okay. Opposites complement each other. Sinner and saint, divine and diabolical, sacred and profane, all seeming op opposites that make for experience. So because experience is not possible in the absence of contrast. Now having said that, you can choose to align your creativity, your consciousness, your intention with the evolutionary impulse of truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, evolution, joy, compassion, love, empathy, equanimity, peace of mind. And so you can at least uh, change your participation in the infinite expressions of awareness. But if awareness is, um, if awareness is infinite, then it must contain infinite modes of knowing, infinite knowers, and infinite objects known, infinite um, expressions include everything. So you can't exclude anything because otherwise by definition it's not infinite. So I hope that answers your question. Try not to impose your personal opinion on the what the infinite mind should be doing or not doing. And also don't personalize the infinite mind into a personality. If you do that, you will have less resistance, less regrets, less anticipation, and more the experience of what is called flow. And that's what you want. Okay, so that's uh, for today, tomorrow from Detroit, and on and on. Thank you once again for supporting the book. Uh, I'm very happy and grateful for your support and for you joining this conversation with me every day on discoveringyourcosmicself.com. Cheers. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.